Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Make sure you invite your friends to join so that they can be blessed. And God bless you as you invite Invite your friends. to friends to join God bless you as you put us in the mighty name of Jesus invite your friends to join Sure you invite your friends to join. David, God bless you, God bless you, I'm very happy to see you all. Invite your friends to join. Bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm happy to see you. Everyone, happy new month, happy new month. Sister Glory, 
good evening ma god bless you happy new month to you too bless you can't me can't me can't me glory be to god glory be to god glory be to god i hope you are blessed by that song ministration uh, that's a very powerful song that you know those are the kind of song that we need at such a time as this you know we must always listen to songs that we keep our heart aflame for heaven we must also always listen to songs that we you know make us to think about heaven and uh, make us to love the things of God. So those are the kind of songs that we need at this time. The hymn was uh, sung by my wife. If you need it, you can contact me. I'm going to send it to you. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Happy new month to every sister and every brother. I'm very, very, very happy to see every one of us. I'm very, 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 very happy to to see us it's such a wonderful i believe this month is going to be a glorious month in the mighty name of jesus christ i welcome every one of us to the moment of truth uh the moment of truth is a time we listen to the undiluted word of god that we help our work with god glory be to god uh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes for prayer as we are going to pray. Almighty God, we bless you. We appreciate you because there is no one like you. We thank you because you have been so good to us, so kind to us. We thank you because you love us. We bless you for everything that you have done for us. Father, we say be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that as we want to listen to your word you will open our eyes we do a new thing in our life in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord because i've done it blessed be your holy name lord in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen praise god uh today we want to talk about finishing gloriously that is what we'll be talking about today we'll be talking about finishing gloriously finishing gloriously our test is taken from the book of second timothy chapter 4 second timothy chapter 4 we are going to start reading from verse 6 second timothy Second Timothy chapter four, verse six. What does the Bible say there? For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all, unto all them also that love is appearing. Amen. Before we continue, if you have not shared this video, make sure you do that so that we can invite others to listen to this word of God. We are talking about finishing gloriously. As a matter of fact, we must understand that every human being is a creature who doesn't know what will befall him tomorrow. No matter how clever a man may be, no matter how smart a man may be, no matter how wise 
a man may be no matter how connected a man may be he can't predict what will become of his life in the next few years to come as a matter of fact everyone that is listening to me including me that is preaching I never know the kind of temptation that will come on my way in the next few years to come. I never know the plan of the devil against my life. You can never tell the plan of the devil against your life next week, next month, or in a few years to come. So a man may boast of today. A man may boast of his strength of today. A man may boast of his energy. Oh, I beat the devil flat. The devil came to me with his temptation. The devil came to me with his strategy. But he didn't succeed. I beat him. I punched him. He failed. You can only celebrate the victory of today. You never know what awaits you tomorrow. This is why if we look at the Bible, you look at some characters, some selected people that started gloriously, but they had a fatter ending. Men looking at their beginning, reading at their glorious beginning, you can tell that such one is going to finish gloriously. But by the time you come to the last chapter of their life, you became so disappointed. You never know that such a person, as devoted as they were to God, as committed as they were to God, and as they were so certain about their vow and covenant to God, by the time you come to the last chapter of their life and you read some errors they made, some mistakes they made, and so other things they allowed in their life that cut short their life or make them to end their life such, in, in such a way, you become so disappointed. And in such situations, the question we should ask ourselves is that what shall be my end? How am I going to finish? By the grace of God, the Lord has called me right from the young age. And from 2008 to this time, I have seen men, I have seen women, I have seen an adult, I have seen young people, I have seen people that they were so, you know, they were so determined. They were so committed. Their beginning was so glorious. I remember a brother at that time, so close to me. In fact, I was even thinking that I, I'm going to make him just my assistant in the ministry. Because why? Men looking at him, is such a person, is such a brother that is so scriptural so violent for the kingdom of God, so fervent. So anytime we go for evangelism together, I'm so happy because <laughs> having him beside me, you know, <laughs> I know he's standing beside me. But unfortunately, to went for an holiday and I saw him I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He has changed. Then I asked him, so and so person, are you the one? He said, yes, I'm the one. I didn't believe. Could he be the one? By the time we resume back to school, oh my God, he has changed. He doesn't have interest in fellowship again. 
He doesn't have interest in anything that pertains to God again. Then he gave himself a name, God. So you never can tell the trap the devil has set against your life tomorrow. So a man, what I'm trying to say is that a man may, may boast of today, but you never can tell whether you will be bold enough to be boast of tomorrow. So in order to finish well, there are some things we must understand about life. And this is why when, when somebody falls, my question is that who is next? I see other Christians, some will laugh. Oh, this person fell into so and so sin. They, you know, they begin to laugh. They begin, it's as if they are expecting that to celebrate. Then I look at them, you never can tell what will become of you tomorrow. You never can tell what the devil has planned against your, your life. This is why the Lord is bringing this message before us today. Finishing gloriously. To finish gloriously, we need to look at the life of Apostle Paul as our example today. Although Christ is a perfect example of this, if we are going to finish gloriously. Let's go back to our test. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. For I know, for, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. The first thing I notice about the life of this man is that he lived his life being conscious of another world. The world of eternity. So that was what his existence is all about. His existence he is not existing for just temporal things. He is not just existing for things that will perish. But his eyes were centered on eternity. That close to the time of his dis the, uh, departure, he could sense it in his spirit. He was so connected to heaven that he could sense it and design it that soon or later, Heaven will call him home to give account. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. As we examine the life of this man, we discover that immediately after his conviction, he became so determined in his work with God. He kept following God. He kept carrying his cross in spite of opposition, in spite of rejection, in spite of suffering and persecution, in spite of difficulties and challenges and hardship. He kept on carrying the cross. Not minding what will happen to him, he kept on carrying the cross because he knew that there is a crown waiting for anyone that endure to the very end. But what can we do in order to finish gloriously? This I consider as a very important question today. A question that I need to ask myself, a question you need to ask yourself. What do I need? Which steps? Which discipline? What lifestyle must I put on in order to finish gloriously? 
Because as I begin to check my Bible, right from the book of Genesis, he started from Adam and Eve that started gloriously. They enjoy the presence of the Father, the presence of the ancient of the they enjoy his presence, they enjoy his glory. He created them in his own image. At the beginning of their life, they were so big, they were so connected, so glorious, and all other creatures bowed before man. All other creatures submitted themselves to man. But all of a sudden, I saw the tempter coming in a scene, in the next scene of their life. I saw the tempter coming in a very corny way, in a very deceptive way, in order to get them in order to deceive them in order to disconnect them from god in order to weaken their conviction and in order to talk to make them to become an enemy of god the same way each time the devil see you in christ each time the devil see you in obedience each time the devil see you in righteous living he has planned he has conspired against you he has prepared some peculiar temptation in order to remove you from Christ. He has set up some opposition in order to weaken your faith. He has raised up some storms. He has prepared some storms in order to, 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 to blow you out of faith. He has prepared some, 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 some war against your soul so that we have a sleepless night. All these things attacking your finance, attacking your husband, attacking your wife, attacking your business, all the things is because of one thing. He wants you out of Christ. He wants you out of Christ. You, you say, how could the devil touch that because of that? God learned from the life of Job. He told God, he said, because he has abundance, this is why he was faithful to you. Why won't he please you and live his life for your own glory when everything is working fine for him? Give me chance, let me touch and see whether I will not curse you. He touched, he touched his things. He even touched his health, but he could not kill him because there was no permission that was given to him to kill Job. So Satan could attack a man's health with one agenda that you may deny the Lord. Oh, you said that was that Old Testament. Do you know that there are some afflictions, some children of God are suffering? That is, is, is a, it's an attack from the pit of hell. Because the devil knows that when the things become so serious, they will deny the Lord. Do you know there are many fathers, sisters, and brothers that has died in, in the house of, of an abalist man? I'm telling you, there are many devoted pastors. There are many holiness pastors that have died in the house of an abalist man. When their sickness became so critical, the man that is sick he was saying take me to anywhere this pain is too much and he died here he said why didn't God heal them in the first place you do not know that our faith will be tried you do not know that we, there is a war between us and darkness and this war is a very fierce war so if I come to you and say, oh, when you are in Christ, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just move on, you will just be fine. Let us lie. The moment, the very day you give your life to Christ, Satan will begin to set his eyes on some areas of your life that you so much cherish. Some areas of your life that is so important to you. These are the area the devil will be launching an attack to because he knows that whatever that happened to that, those areas, you can be discouraged. In some cases, he raised the wife against the husband. In some cases, he raised the husband against the wife. In some cases, he raised parents against children. In some cases, you raise children against their parents with one agenda that he may deny their faith. 
that he may come out from the faith, that he may be disconnected from Christ. Hallelujah. So you must be aware there is a tempter seeking for your destruction. There is an enemy seeking for your destruction. This enemy is so terrible. This enemy is so heartless. This enemy is so wicked. This enemy is so deadly. So deadly. He knows where he can attack that will pay you. He knows those, he knows those areas. He knows what he will do that will pay you. And this is why it is important for us to understand what must be done if we are going to finish gloriously. What must we do if we are going to finish gloriously? Number one, don't be men pleaser. Don't be men pleaser. A lot of people have lost their faith because they want to please people. They want to please someone. If I didn't do it, they will talk. Have you? Do you remember sometimes that you were asked to do some things? You really do, doesn't want to do it. But just because you want to please that person, you just do it. If you are going to finish gloriously, don't be men pleaser. Because if you want to please men, if you want to please men, go and learn from King King Saul. When men begin to put pressures on you, when family members begin to put pressures on you, when husband begin to put pressure on you, when a wife begin to put pressure on you, asking you to do things that is opposite to the will of God, asking you to do things that God has forbidden, asking you to take a step that is not in line with the purpose and the plan of God. Such a time. The only way not to be victim is two things. Ask the Lord to help you in the wisdom you will use in order not to fall to the pressures of men. The second thing you need is determination. What did I say? Determination. Determination. I can't forget the time I was called by my teachers. They called me under a mango tree. All of them, they were aged people, they were elderly people. And I was a very small boy and they begin to question me about my feet. And they were saying that I'm too young to serve God. Said I'm too young to serve God. So why are you disturbing yourself when you have gone to higher institution and uh, you know you have already succeeded, then you can serve God. You can serve other youths. They're enjoying their say, Why can't you do the same thing? I was surprised. I was embarrassed that day. They disgraced me. But there was one thing in my mind. 
I won't disappoint God. Oh, I was going to the class one day and, uh, you know, the teacher just saw me. He screamed my name. He said, you, kneel down there. Kneel down there. You want to turn this school to church? I will never allow. I will not allow. Kneel down there. So I went to my new. Other students, they were, ask, they were asking, what have you done? So I didn't do anything. They said, I want to turn this school to church. In the classroom, I was embarrassed, slapped by a teacher. <laughs> and at the same time, in the house, I was facing persecutions. Everywhere I turned to was rejection. Unlike before, when I have not given my life to Christ. Then I understood that this war is not a small war. So, when you are under pressure, there are two things you need, as I said before. It's not part of things to do. If you are going to finish gloriously, I said, you must pray for the Lord to give you wisdom on the reply you should give. Wisdom on what you should do. Wisdom to use. Because if you don't apply wisdom in such a situation, it can become, it can turn to things that will be, that will be beyond your control. That you will be forced to do what you don't want to do. And the second thing is determination. Determination. No. I will not do it. God is against it. God has forbidden it. God has said no. God has said no. So I will not do it. Without such determinations, we can't finish gloriously. So don't be men pleasers. Two way men will came to you. Men will be used. Number one. Men will tempt you with pleasure and profit. Profit and pleasure attached to some certain decision and step. And number two, men will set you on pleasure. If Satan cannot get you by presenting pleasure, by, uh, by, by presenting pleasure and profit, he will attack you by raising men to put pressure on you. And this pressure will be so strong, it will come especially when you are to make some crucial decisions, a change of life, you want to serve God, you want to take some step God asks you to take, and many other areas. So, pressures will be raised up. Satan will stir up a pressure, and the purpose of it is to weaken your faith. The purpose of it is to discourage you. The purpose of it is to spoil your life. That's the purpose of it. Because he knew that the moment, because Satan had been launched and striking some arrows, he has been coming to attack you with the spirit of death, using all kinds of means, and those things does not work out. So he's seeking for an opportunity. He, he's, he's, he wants a door to be open so that he can come and attack you. So he wants to stir up a pressure so he knew that when that pressure so becomes so strong, you can be so discouraged and be so weakened and weakened in faith. And as a result of that, he may launch an attack against your life. I get my point. So when Satan can't get you by profit and 
and, and, and pleasure, he will attempt using the strategy of pressure. A lot of people are denying the Lord because they are under pressure. A lot of people have finished their life in hell because they were under pressure. Pressure is one of the powerful weapons the devil have used to pull down many mighty men. King Saul was pulled down through pressure. Men laid pressures on him. The Philistines are coming. They are coming. Do something. Do something. Do something. The moment men are telling you, do something. Do something. Do something. Those are the most important moments of your life. You must be careful of what you will say. Those are the important moments of your life. You must be careful of the steps you will take. Or else you will find yourself in trouble. You will find yourself in what you never expect. So, when you are under pressure, I said, ask for the Lord to give you wisdom on how to act. Wisdom on how to, 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 to act. And number two, you must be determined. So, I go to the second thing. If you are going to finish gloriously, set Christ as your example. Set Christ as your example. Set Christ as your example. If you are going to finish gloriously, you must set Christ as your example. The Bible says, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that simply means you need to look at Jesus Christ, set up Jesus Christ as an example. He said, Lord, all I want is you in my life. I want your totality in my life. I want your reign in my life. I want your dominion in my life. I want you to take over my life. All I want is is you so you set Christ as your example Bible say let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus you begin to ask yourself what is he that is in Christ that is not in me what is he that I can see in Christ that I did not have yet in my life so if you are going to if we are going to finish gloriously we have to set Christ as our examples acting as Christ acted in some times of his life. In fact, do you remember? The Bible says they were asking him that question in order to tempt him. So the purpose of the question, those people, they, 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 they asked him was because they wanted to tempt him. The Bible said that. But the Bible says he knew, he knew their hearts. He knew what was in their hearts. So as and, and 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 because of that, he answered them according to the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Remember, he himself is wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So Sometimes we come in our life that we need to give answer to some people. There will be a time in our life that we have to reply to some, some people. There will be a time in our life that we have to, you know, make some decisions. There will be a time in our life we will be asked to do some things that we know to be contrary to the purpose and the plan of God. So at such a time, we must ask the Lord to give us the wisdom. So we ask ourselves, what did Christ do at such a time? 
What did he do? What did he say? So when you are to be set, you are to sit among the panels and you will be asked to do what is negative. What you must pray is that, Lord, put your word into my mouth. Put your word into my mouth. Is the one that will put the word you need at such a time. So number one, if you are going to finish gloriously, don't be men pleaser. Don't be men pleaser. Number two, you know, under the men pleasers, we mentioned some points that men is going to set, they are going to set you on pressure. But as such a situation, you must ask for wisdom on how to act, and you must be determined. There must be a determination. And I said that, you know, Satan is going to use men to tempt you with profit and pleasure. And when he failed, then you will be tempted, you know, with pressure so that you may deny the faith. So those things are very important that we need to note and understand. So that at such a time, particular time of our life, when those things come up against us, we will understand the purpose why they are coming. We will have understand that this is coming from the enemy. We will have understand that the devil is coming up in order to hinder us from finishing gloriously. So these things are very important for us to understand. So I said the second thing we need if we are going to finish gloriously, you have to set Christ, Jesus Christ, as your example. The reason is because if you set your eyes on men, you will be disappointed. A lot of people have departed from the faith because they said, oh, how could somebody like that do such a thing? That's what they said. And as a result of that, they forsook the faith. They started doing otherwise. So when you set Christ as your example, when you are under pressures or in any point, every, any point in time, you will have understand that I need the same grace that Christ had to carry the cross without being tired. I need the same grace to overcome this. So you have to set, uh, set Christ Jesus Christ, you have to set Jesus Christ as your example. Copy him, copy his lifestyle and ask him that he will fill you with his mighty presence. That in every areas of your life, what people will see, what men will see is Christ. When they look at your life, what they will see will be Christ. When they look at your character, what they will see will be Christ. The third thing you need, if you are going to finish gloriously, set your affections on things from above. Set your affection on things from above. Bible says the love of money is a root of all evil. And apart from that, you must understand that God is not against us having money. God is not against us making it in life. But what God is against is that when our affections are only on those things and not on things from above, Look at that rich fool in the Bible. He has so much abundance and he told his soul. He said, Thou all oh my soul rejoice. Because there is going to be an abundance for you. And the Lord looked at him and said, Thou fool, today your soul shall be required from you. 
The moment a Christian sets his affections on things that are seen and not on things from above, such a Christian will begin to find himself doing what he never expects. He will begin to engage himself in all kinds of relationship that will lead to the decline of his spirituality, that will lead to the decreasing of, of the life of God in his life, or he, that, that will lead him to, to, to engage himself in things that is going to quench the fire of God in his life. Do you understand? Praise the Lord. So what, what, what am I trying to say? Is that we are to set our affection on things from above. It means that we think of heaven. We think about the glory waiting for us in the kingdom of God. If your mind is, oh, the numbers of children that we have, the beautiful wife that we married, the handsome husband that we married, the, the uh, ten-story building I want to, I, I, will, I want to build, when your mind is only occupied with those things, you will fall. I mean, you will fall because Satan will set temptations according to your affections. <laughs> Let me tell you something, how it works. Satan is very cunning. So what he normally do is that I pray God will, under, God will open your eyes so that you will understand because this is a mystery. Satan always comes with different things. Do you, okay, let me, thank you, Jesus. Now, let me use this example. I'm, I'm coming back to that exact example. You know, sometimes when your child is crying and you are trying to beg him, beg the baby, beg the baby, the, the, the child is not stopping. You ask the baby, what do you want? What do you want? And uh, you can't really figure out exact thing that he is saying. Then let's say you bring out biscuits, you bring out shishin, you bring out uh, sweet, you bring out different different things. You are now asking, do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? You understand what I'm saying? Do you want this? I know those that are parents, you understand what I'm talking about. Do you want this one? Do you want this one? Then that particular and, and when by the time you brought something let's say you, you brought sweet now i said do you want this one he said yes i i want it by the time you give him the sweet you discover that he didn't cry again he stopped crying so that means at that moment what his affection is craving and crying for is sweet and not biscuit not gala <laughs> that is what satan normally do it will bring the screen loaded with money and he's discovered that you did not think about that he <laughs> bring another screen with you know 20 story building and he discovered that you did not think about that then he bring he begin to bring different things bring different things by the time he now brought a particular one This he may not do in the same day. Because Satan always carry out his strategy in a very perfect and cunning and crafty way. So by the time and that particular day, he brought that one that the one he has not he has not even brought before. And he discovered that you so much have interest in it. Then he will begin to hammer you with temptation in that area. Those are the areas Satan will now concentrate on. So any, any temptation you want to bring down, it will be so that you can achieve that particular affection in your heart. <laughs> Do you understand? So the Bible says, set your affection on things from above. Where Christ seated. Where Christ seated. 
So when Satan come with all those kind of things, he come with money, he come with dollar, he come with pounds, he come with euro, he come with naira, he come with different different currency, and he discovered that those things does not grab your attention. He bring pictures of you know i want to travel to everywhere in the world i want to this one those kind of things he brought them but he discovered that as he's bringing them you have no interest in those things then satan will begin to venture his eyes will not be on setting setting up a pressure that may discourage you of touching your business that will make you to be down or touching some certain sensitive areas of your life so that you can be down or be cold spiritually. That's how the devil operates. This thing that I just explained in a very simple way, in a very clear way, this is the way the devil has achieved his agenda in the life of billions of billions of, of people in the ages, even in our own generation. So, if we are going to finish well, the next one is that we must understand the strategy of the devil. We must, sorry, we must not be ignorant of the strategy of the devil. God bless you, bro. Paul, you're welcome. Don't, don't do what? Ignorance of the strategy of the devil. Hmm. God help us. Because at such a time, we need the grace of God to remember that it is the devil that is, that is, that is, uh, that, that, that is, you know, coming in a very, in a very cunning way in order to weaken us. So, you must not be, number four, you must not be ignorant of the strategy of the devil. The apostle they said, he said, we are not ignorance of the devices of the devil. That is one of the secrets of their consistent, you know, their consistent victory. So when Satan comes, they understood that oh, it is the devil. Satan, we know you are the one. You can't discourage us. You cannot weaken. You can't weaken. We understand you are the one. When you are tired, you will go. When, when your mother-in-law began to scream on you, where is the child? You have been in this marriage for 10 years, for 20 years. There is no child. Oh, another woman is coming. Another woman is coming. Another woman is coming. Another woman is coming. And Satan is the one that stay, uh, stay her up. And Satan is, is, is standing in one corner, expecting to see you crying, to see you down, discouraged. And by the time the mama have finished talking and they have, you know, they, she have gone, <laughs> Satan, Satan is waiting for the next thing to, you are going to do. So he thought that you are going to, you are going to cry now. And he said, instead of crying, you begin to laugh. And say, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know who my self, I know he has promised. I know there's going to be a cry of baby in my house. When Satan saw you doing that, he will be disappointed. But the moment he saw that after the, the, the man, woman, the woman finished talking, by the time the person finished talking, then you started crying. Hey God, I'm serving you. I'm serving you. Why, why? Then Satan will say, Good. We now begin to come with thoughts. We begin to say, You are serving God. You are praying. You are fasting. And with all your prayer and everything, look at what is happening to you. Is, it, is your life not better when you're in the world? You begin to say those kind of things. Ah, you know now, ah, you are very smart. You are very smart when you are in the world. This, this faith you claim you have received now has made it to be dull. She knows what you can do. This woman, if you become so mad at her, do you think that she will call you again? That is how the devil operates. But when he sees that no chance is given to him, Satan will be disappointed. But at such a time, we need the grace to act wisely. We need what? We need the grace to act wisely. I remember 
We have to pay the house rent. <laughs> I was thinking, Lord, what am I going to do? Things are not moving well. Oh, the landlord recalled and said, I just want to remind you. So, by faith, I said, oh, okay, I didn't forget you, sir, by the end of the month. But we surely see you. But I believe so much that my God can even do it before the end of the month. And he did. What am I trying to say? Is that we must ask for the grace to stand at such a time. Because such a time is a very critical time. It's a very critical time. I'm telling you, if you've never been in such a situation before, uh, hmm. I'm not praying that it will come, oh, but it's a normal experience of those who want to make heaven. Oh. You don't invite them to come. Satan normally bring them in order to weaken you. I was praying for other people who were sick and they were being healed of their sickness. I was sick. I was praying for myself. The sickness refused to go. My wife was sick. I was praying for her. The sickness refused to go. Those, those kind of moments is a moment one must be very sensitive in the spirit because Satan will come in a very cunning way in order to launch an attack against our faith. In other words, if we are going to finish gloriously, we must be aware that there is a strategy the devil is going to use. Satan always operates with a strategy. He doesn't fight a blind fight. If he always fights in a strategic manner. So he won't just come, no, 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 no. He knows the best weapon to use. He knows the word to use. He knows the language. So he knows how to approach you to get your attention. But when you are not ignorant of his devices, ignorant of his strategies, so when it comes, you must understand, you will already understand. Number five is that you must ask God to give you the gift of discernment. You must ask God to give you the gift of discernment. The purpose of discernment is for you to understand those that Satan has sent into your life to destroy you. Because those souls will come as a friend. They are called the unfriendly friend. They are called the unfriendly friend. So they will come, they come in a way, some of them will come pretending that they want to help your faith or help your stand. But they have actually come in order to destroy you. But by discernment, you will be able to know the spirit operating in a man. You will be able to understand the purpose why a man is coming close to you. It's not everyone that laughs at you that loves you. It's not everyone that says, oh, you are doing good job, good job, good job. That really means what they are saying. Some have a lot of interior motive against your life. And once they are true, we destroy you. They will run away. They will run away. So we must understand Christ alone is a city of refuge that we have to trust and be at all times. There is a city of refuge built in the Old Testament. The purpose why it was built in case there is an avenger of blood, somebody mistakenly hurt someone or killed someone, it was not intentional. 
So I know the avenger is saying, no, I will take vengeance. No, he must also die. And he's pursuing that pers person. So according to the law that was laid down, immediately the person managed to escape to that city of refuge. He is free from the blood of that person. It's no, long, it's no longer guilty. And that person had no right to kill him again. But we must understand there is no man on earth that can be our city of refuge. It is only in Christ we can confide in. It is only in Christ that we can. It is Christ, Christ alone is the best friend. <laughs> you know, there are some that will stir up war and leave you with the war and run away. They are telling you, don't worry, we are behind you. We are behind you. We are, do you remember those kind of experience? By the times the war started, they leave you and, and leave you with the war. So, so many people are like that. So what am I trying to say? Is that if we are going to finish gloriously, it is important for us, first, very, very important, we must set Christ as our example. These are essential if we are going to finish gloriously. We must set our hearts on things from above. Very important if we are going to finish gloriously. We must not be men pleaser. Very important if we are going to finish gloriously. And I said, we must not be ignorant of the strategy of the devil. And my father, I said, we must tell the Lord to give you the grace, to give you the gift of discernment. At least you must pray for God to sharpen your discernment. That anyone that is coming close to you to destroy you, the Lord will expose them. Such men always operate with mask. They operate with mask. They hide behind a beautiful name, but their agenda and motive is to destroy you. Is to destroy you. The next one, if we are going to finish gloriously, very, very important, we must discipline ourselves. Discipline is very, very important. Lack of discipline is what puts the Azai in trouble. Lack of discipline, that is what puts, uh, what's the name of this man? Akan in trouble. Because he refused to discipline himself. Oh, when he saw the Babylonish, Babylonish, uh, Babylonish garment, he saw it. Oh, this is beautiful. So I must get this. This thing is fine. And by the time he converted it, the Bible says he hid it under his tent. He dig the ground and put it there. But he didn't know that such is going to put his life in trouble. So we must discipline. Why discipline? Because some things, we are living in a world that there are things that are calling our attention. There are things that are set up. They are calling on our attention, telling us to come. 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 That's what they're saying. And they are so attractive. They are so pleasing to the body. You know, <laughs> they're like food to the eyes. But we must understand that, you know, most of those things are decorated dangers. They are set up to destroy us. They are set up to hinder us in life. The Lord will help us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Last one before we pray because of our time. If we are going to finish gloriously, we must ask the Lord to order our step. Lord, order my step. I never know what our today is going to be. 
I never know what will become of my life today. This is why I'm praying, Lord, order my step. You must always tell the Lord to order your step. Because hmm, in this world of decision and choice, you will always need the Lord to guide you. Order my step. I don't want to take a wrong step. I don't want to take any step that will lead me out of your way or that will put me in trouble, that will separate me from you. I don't want such a thing. I don't want such a thing. So we must always ask the Lord to order our step. When he order our step, we will not fall into the hands of the enemy of our soul. The Lord in his mercy help us to finish gloriously in the name of Jesus Christ. We must understand the reward of those that finish gloriously. We must understand it. You are going to receive the crown of righteousness. You are going to reign with Christ forever and ever in the kingdom of God. You will not be a partaker of those that we, that, that we, that we be in the agony of the lake of fire for all eternity. But you shall be with Christ in his glory, in his power, in the kingdom of God. And such is a life that, that, that is wonderful, excellent, and, and, a, and, and a glorious life. So, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So, whatever you are going through now, please set your eyes on these points I have mentioned. Let it become a lifestyle. Ask the Lord to give you the grace to put this word of God into practice. Let it be your desire to finish gloriously. No matter what you may be going through now, situation that may have come against you, please don't depart from the faith. Don't depart from the faith. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on doing the good things. Keep on doing what the Lord has told you to be doing. Because by the time you endure to the end, the Bible says, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And that same is I that will endure to the end. It's you that will endure to the end. Don't allow yourself in any situations that will make you to say, no, there is no hope again. I have told you, there is always hope. There is no, there is no situation that is hopeless as long as God is on the throne. So whatever you may be going through, either in your business, in your family, in your finance, don't be discouraged. There is always hope in Christ. Every problem that comes on our way have an expiring date. They have what? They have an expiring date. It's not going to be forever. It's not going to be forever. So set your eyes on the Lord. Look at what Paul said. He said, I fought a good fight. He thought fight that fight is, you know, is, is just, if, if I was to just sit down, go through your Bible, and look at the spirit that Paul, the apostle, went through, you will understand that he really fought indeed. A serious fight. Many times he was beaten, disgraced, stripped, and uh, embarrassed because of his feet. Yet, he kept on following the Lord. He didn't give up. He was not tired. So the Lord that helped him, the same God can help us. The Lord told him, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. The same God can tell I and you today that his grace is sufficient for us. Our own is to believe him that he is able to perfect what he has started in our life. That the good God that started our salvation will help us to finish well in the kingdom of God. Not just in the bosom of Abraham, but in the presence and in the kingdom of our God and Savior. May the Lord use this word as, you know, as a, as, as, as a seed that will help you grow and be closer to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Close your eyes for prayer. Begin to pray and talk to God. Lord, help me. Help me. At that junction of my life, help me. Father, I need your grace, Lord, in this junction of my life. I want you, Lord, to count me worthy. Count me worthy, Lord. 
count me what the law count me what the law open your mouth and put a prayer law count me what the Lord, can't me worthy. Lord, can't me worthy. Can't me worthy. Can't me worthy. Can't me worthy. Can't me among those that will reign with you in the kingdom of God. Lord, can't me worthy. At this junction of my life, help me. I don't want to fail you. I don't want to please man. I don't want to please man. I don't want to please man. Lord, help me, Lord. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Only you can do that. Only you can do that. Help me, Lord. I need your grace. 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 I need your grace, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I'm going to pray and talk to God. Lord, every walk of darkness in my faith be destroyed. Let them be destroyed today by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and put up prayer. Every finished walk of the devil in my faith be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be destroyed, 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 be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because of our done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you because of answer our prayer. We so much believe you that only you can help us in this journey. We know it's not an easy road. We know that the journey is very stressful. We know there are a lot of attack, temptation, difficulties. But Lord, we want to keep standing for what is right, what is holy, and what is pure and true. And Lord, we ask for the grace to do that in the name of Jesus Christ. We don't want to finish in hell, but we want to finish well. We want to finish gloriously in the bosom of Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you have done it. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we bless God for today, by uh, today, the moment of truth. I believe that the Lord has blessed us uh, with this message today. To Him alone be all glory and honor forever and ever. And uh, do not forget that tomorrow is our VG. Do your best to join. I will be expecting you. I want to see you tomorrow. So do your best to join. Tomorrow, VG, 12.30 a.m. Nigeria and UK time. 1.30 a.m. Uh, UK time. Uh, Europe time, rather. So do your best to join tomorrow, 12.30 a.m. Nigeria and UK time. 1.30 a.m. Europe time, to your best to join tomorrow. It's going to be a glorious moment in the presence of God. Do your best to join. Uh, and regarding our All Nation Conference, so we are still going to give us an update on that, uh, whether the conference is going to hold or not. So we are still going to give you an update on that. The Lord will help us. I know the will of God is going to be done. Whatever that happens, to God be all glory. To God be all glory. So I hope to see you tomorrow by the grace of God. I greet every sister and every brother. I may not be able to mention names today. I am very happy to see everyone that is watching live and those that are still watching, the sister that is still going to watch later, the brother that is going to watch later. I love you all. I'm very happy to always see you watching the videos. And I pray that as you continue doing that, the Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, if, if you want to support us, you can send us an uh, a, a message can reach out to us you can contact us and as you do that the lord will help you in the mighty name of jesus christ god bless you all i hope to see you tomorrow and as you join god will bless you and extend my greeting to your wife to your husband and to your children 
and make sure you do that, please. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom.